Big 12 Media Day, baby. It's a beautiful thing. That means college football season is just about to be here. What do we make of Oklahoma? I'm going to go ahead and say it. I think Oklahoma deserves a little bit more buzz than they're getting right now. I believe I think Oklahoma has got some more juice than what is being served their way because the Big 12 to me right now is a crowded room with a lot of noise going on. It's a literally crowded crowded room that you added four new teams. You have a pretty new commissioner who's bringing some juice to the party as well. And there's a lot of headlines being made about what's being said about Texas. And they're, you know, supposed to win the thing, right? Like they've got the best roster according to, you know, the recruiting rankings and what they've done via the portal and their quarterback. Like I'm, I'm not even saying I'm against that with Texas. I'm not even saying I don't agree with that. Kansas State bring back 15 of 22 starters. They just won the Big 12 a season ago. A lot of noise right now in the Big 12. A lot of excitement in the Big 12. But who's out there hanging back on the wall? Yeah, they're about to leave for the SEC, so they're not you know, flying under the radar completely by any stretch. But they're usually the second part of the conversation when you talk about the Big 12 in 2023. It starts with four new teams, or it starts with Texas is going to be this, or it starts with what Brett Yormark said. And then somewhere on the second half of that sentence, you talk about Oklahoma and Brent Venables in his second year there. So what do we make about Oklahoma? Well, again, I think they deserve a little bit more buzz. We'll talk about that in a second. Oklahoma fans, make sure you're subscribed right here. We're talking ball every day. A lot of y'all have been with us since the independent days in Waco, Texas. So thank you for that. And if you haven't yet subscribed right here to the On3 YouTube channel, we'd love to have you here as well. So thank you so much. We're on podcast, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get them. can find hour-long episodes of The Hard Count. Just go ahead and type in The Hard Count with J.D. Pakel. You will find us there. Thank you so much. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all in advance for that. Okay, so here's the thing. I really, really like Oklahoma, like I've already made pretty clear. And they have a lot of things to me, to put it most simply, the things that Oklahoma has matter. Like, I really, really like the way they're built because they have things that matter. And the first thing that I think matters when you look at your football team, the talent. The roster to Oklahoma, yeah, Texas is stocked. Like, no other way around it. Texas has got a lot of good players. But to the exact same token, Oklahoma, I think, is right up there in terms of talent when you compare roster to roster. Like, Oklahoma should be favored in just about every game they play in the Big 12 outside of that game against Texas. Oklahoma is not just out here with a 6-7 and seven roster. They had a 6-7 and seven record, but I don't think you look at the talent and say, oh, yeah, 6-7 and seven team. No, by no stretch of the imagination do you say that. They also have an offensive coordinator and quarterback that have been together for some time, which means continuity. It means he's probably progressing in that system, is Dylan Gabriel. The offense wasn't the problem last year. Scored almost 30 points a game. Now, when Dylan Gabriel was healthy, the offense wasn't the problem. Very important caveat there. But even so, the offense, I don't think, is the major issue. The defense is where you have to get better. Going back to talent now, Brent Venables knew they were not good enough, went to work in the portal. I've talked about Desan McCullough a lot on this show. I'm buying stock. I understand he's going back and forth for that cheetah position. I think he'll win it, and I think he'll be an absolute dude for you come Saturdays in the fall. So for Oklahoma, the talent, the continuity at the quarterback and OC spot, like I love the way that they're built. I cannot say this enough about Oklahoma. Now, the key piece for them offensively to really take that next step under Jeff Lebby, we're all talking about it now. Can somebody separate on the outside and step into those shoes that Marvin Mims leaves in Norman, Oklahoma? Do we have somebody that can do that? Andrew Anthony is a guy that a lot of people are excited about. Jaleel Farouk, you would hope, can also take that next step and be that alpha wide receiver. Bottom line, someone's got to do it because they're going to go fast. They're going to run the football. And if you spread them out and you go fast and you run the football, well, there's just too much grass to cover. 53.3 yards, y'all. That's the width of a football field. It's hard to have somebody back there covering all of that green grass. So that tells me, just like Josh Heupel's offense at Tennessee, if you win at the wide receiver position, if you can win one-on-one, you got a quarterback that can throw it to you, and you got a lot of green grass to run to. Safety might eventually get there, but it's going to be tough to get all the way there before you do some damage or if you don't get to the paint in itself and score six points. So the bottom line I'm trying to say here is I like the roster. Yeah, there's some caveats, some question marks. Yeah, they got to get better on defense. But at a jumping off point in the Big 12, I don't understand why they're not getting more buzz. I mean, I understand it with all the storylines and whatnot, but I think you need to take Oklahoma much more seriously from the outside looking in. And the reason why they're not getting taken more seriously, in my humble opinion, is because there are no weak opinions on Brent Venables. 
right? And went six and seven last year. It was his first year as a head coach and everybody wants to write him off or you're saying, no, hang with them. Like those are the two camps you fall into. But my thing that I would say on Brent Venables is it's year one. It was year one. Yeah, he went six and seven. They also lost five games by one score. Okay, so you're telling me if they just win half those games, let's say they win two of those games, they're an eight-win football team. They win another one of those games, they're a nine-win football team. Like, you see what I'm saying? Oklahoma, from a gameplay perspective, is not as far off as their record would allow you to believe. And so what I want to make sure we don't get caught up here is the punchline culture. Because Oklahoma had a losing record, and Brent Venables is still learning on the job in one of the biggest jobs in college football, being the head coach of Oklahoma. Like, a lot of people are quick to make the punchline joke about what Brent Venables is going to be when they get to the SEC and how Oklahoma can't stack up. And, oh, you're having trouble in the Big 12? Wait till you get to the Big Boys League. Like, I hear all that. I'm not even saying it's untrue. But I think to just assume that we have a defined version of what Brent Venables is as a head coach and a defined version of what Oklahoma is going to be in 2023 is just not even close to a fair assessment to make. And I'll say one thing too, hearing Brent Venables the other day at Big 12 Media Day, he was asked about the learning curve of what it's like being a head coach. And he just absolutely was dropping bars. The quote is as follows. Brent Venables goes on and says, you learn a lot through failure. And then eventually went on to say, winners respond. Winners come back a better version of themselves. Winners go right back at it. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Listen, I have no horse in the race. I went to Cornell and I love my alma mater. I'm going to watch them on Saturdays. I'm, I'm not rooting for any specific Big 12 team. But hearing Brent Venables say that, I was ready to run through a brick wall, baby. I can't imagine being in that locker room. And he's saying that publicly. What's he saying internally to his guys? What are the, what's that messaging like? So I'll just say this. The approach from Brent Venables and the attitude it sounds like they have in Norman from what he said at Big 12 Media Day and from the buzz that we've heard from people close to that operation in Norman, I'm just saying overlook Oklahoma at your own risk because the talent, what they have at quarterback, the way they've improved through the portal, and their approach right now, the hunger they got right now, the, the, the little edge they have to them, it seems, I want to overlook the Sooners. I think you should do that at your own risk. Appreciate you locking in with us. We're pushing towards 100K subs. Would love to have you a part of it, baby. You love the sport. We love the sport. We live and die by fall Saturday afternoons. We'd love to have you a part of this because that's what we're about right here. All right? We appreciate y'all. We love y'all. We're going to keep this party rolling, and we will see y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.